Hi everyone, I'm Mike Novogratz and this is Next with Nova. Hey everybody, this is Mike Novogratz from Next with Novo. I'm here with Zach Prince, one of the best CEOs in the crypto blockchain space. He runs BlockFi. It's the hottest lending company in crypto. Mike, thanks so much for having me, man. It's great to see you. You know, we started the journey uh, at Galaxy with Zach literally right when he started his company. So it's been fun for me to see uh, this young pup grow into a uh, an awesome CEO. Uh, Zach, where are you from? Tell us a little bit of your own life first before we start about your company. Yeah, sure. So I, uh, I grew up in South Texas. I'm originally from San Antonio. I was a uh, nationally ranked and very competitive tennis player throughout my youth and uh, decided that I wasn't going to go pro uh, around the time I was deciding where to go to college. And so I, I stopped playing tennis competitively in college and found my way into being a semi-professional online poker player. This was back when uh, ESPN had just started showing the World Series of Poker and I had been playing poker every Wednesday night with my high school buddies and read a few books, kind of consistently took their money on those friendly games and uh, fortunately turned uh, turned a very small investment into the online uh, you know, poker world into enough capital to uh, pay for my education, graduate with, uh, with no debt. And then after finishing school, I found my way to uh, New York City. I always wanted to work in finance, but I graduated in May of 2009. So I ended up initially getting a job at a, uh, a digital advertising technology company that, um, uh, you know, three years after I joined there as employee number 17, we were 250 people and we got acquired by Google and I had kind of climbed through the ranks. Uh, and then I got to Google and hated it really quickly because it was a, this huge company and I wasn't having a big impact anymore. So I was like, maybe I like this startup thing. Um, and the consistent theme throughout my career is that I've been uh, you know, at technology companies, uh, generally startups, generally in high growth, uh, innovative environments, originally in ad tech. Then prior to BlockFi, I worked in the online lending sector, which experienced, a you know, kind of a lot of excitement and a, yeah, sure. a big growth period. Um, and then started BlockFi in uh, 2017. All right. So now we're crypto. You start BlockFi. What was the genesis of the idea? Yeah, well, the genesis of the idea came from uh, from a couple of things. So one was my experience in the online lending sector, which taught me a few things about um, where there can be opportunities uh, to build kind of debt capital markets businesses, good strategies for building those businesses. That was one part of it. And the other part was I had just become incredibly personally fascinated with the possibilities that could come from this ecosystem, partially because I had been personally investing in it, but partially because I had gone down the proverbial rabbit hole and, you know, kept having my mind blown every time I'd, I learned new things that uh, that were happening in, in the space. And so early 2017, I started investing in 2014. I was writing about it on a, on a small blog that I had online in 2015. And early 2017, it started to feel like mainstream adoption was uh, was beginning to happen. I had been going to meetups in New York City, which originally was like 10 people uh, in a bar and it was you know, kind of nerdy and weird. Um, but in 2017, big law firms are hosting events. It was becoming very, uh, very real, or at least it felt like it was. And so, um, you know, banks weren't gonna lend anytime soon. They, they never are our first movers. I had a lot of experience in private credit markets and online consumer lending platforms. And at one of the meetups, it might've been a Galaxy Digital one, I said to somebody, hey, do you think it would be a good idea if uh, you know I started a company and made it possible for people to borrow money against their Bitcoin so they didn't have to sell it if they needed liquidity? And they were like, that's the best idea I've ever heard. What, what, what are you waiting for? Get started. And I went home that night and I told my wife that you know I thought I might have an idea to start a company. And she was like, what are you waiting for? Just do it. And so the next day, I... Uh, I let the fintech company that I was working at at the time know that uh, I needed to, you know, transition out and uh, and go start something in the crypto space. And did you ever, you know, then every founder dreams of big things, but wow, you're, you know, a $3 billion company now. Uh, how many employees? A little over 500. We're about 520 people today. 500 people, 3 billion of market cap-ish. Uh, you've got how many customers? On the, on the retail side of our platform, we have 225,000 funded accounts. 
Uh, on the institutional side, we transact with about 200 uh, firms today. Right. So one of the bigger, if not the biggest crypto lending platform. Um, when it started, did you think people would give you their Bitcoin for three, four, five, six, ten percent? That wasn't even part of the original idea. <laughs> so uh, the original idea was we're going to lend folks dollars secured by their Bitcoin as collateral. And we thought right. that there might be an opportunity because this collateral was liquid to, you know, do something with that over time. But the original idea was we're going to lend folks dollars secured by their Bitcoin as collateral. And, you know, when I was able to start having conversations with folks after leaving that fintech company, I got smacked in the face with a quick dose of reality. I had, you know, I made a PowerPoint deck and I started going to VCs and telling them about this idea, thinking that they were just going to give me a bunch of money and we were going to be off to the races. And it was really hard. We were too crypto for fintech investors and they were saying, oh, nobody's going to, how big is this market even? What do you mean someone's going to want to borrow dollars secured by their Bitcoin? This is, this is like a weird fringe thing. And the crypto investors were telling us, what do you mean you're not going to do an ICO? And uh, how do you not understand that everything is the future? We're like, well, we think those par there's parts of the traditional you know, way that these things works that makes a lot of sense here. And so it took us six months to do the seed round. And um, uh, you know, a, a big kudos to, to you and uh, Galaxy Digital and, and specifically Chris Ferraro, who were some of the first folks that pushed the I Believe button uh, on BlockFi. And, and we wouldn't have gotten off the ground if it weren't for that relationship. And then from that starting point of lending people dollars secured by their Bitcoin, we just kept our ears open and listened to the market. And I think we've done a really good job at uh, developing new products and services quickly based on what we're hearing uh, from the market in terms of what folks want. Well, listen, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, part of all of our journeys, right, was a big bet on this whole ecosystem developing, right? It was crypto, this idea, crypto, this revolution people would talk about, right? This decentralized revolution, peer to peer. Um, I was on a, a a clubhouse two nights ago with a whole bunch of people. And in the middle of my spiel, I was like, you know what? Let's just pause for a second because in the next two months, in the last two months, something really special happened. Like, and some of us haven't even noticed it, but Bitcoin, crypto, blockchain as, a, as an asset class has arrived. And it's arrived for real. It's arrived for good. Every single major financial institution is getting involved. Every single tech company is getting involved. And so we've had this step function of the value of our companies, the value of our IP, the value of our work, the value of our tokens. Uh, that feels a little bit like, oh shit, last time it crashed, therefore maybe it, and it's different. And I'm not saying everything's different this time. We've had a step function of this is a real asset class. And so things are gonna accelerate from here because human capital is pouring in and, and talent is pouring in. The tougher news is, oh, the competition's coming, um, right? The the legacy banks are coming. Someone told me today that J.P. Morgan just increased their tech spend by three billion dollars this month. Three billion. On, on, that's increase in tech spend. Um, you know they're worried about losing payments. Uh, banks make a fortune in cross border payments, and if the stablecoin business takes takes a bunch of that, that's not good for the banks. What do you see your competitive landscape now, right? You, in, in our own world, you've got Celsius, you've got a couple competitors, but when you think about one year, two year, what's the competitive landscape look like? So the way we think about our competitors at BlockFi is, is as follows. I think a year ago, folks put us squarely in a category of competing with other startup lending platforms and uh, the decentralized finance lenders. And we, we think and kind of hope that we've, put ourselves in a category leading position there now. And we're kind of in the process of graduating to the next level, which we think of as competing with uh, the more established uh, crypto businesses, which is primarily uh, exchanges um, and FinTech firms uh, that have gotten involved and are now competing for retail mind share uh, and order flow with their platforms, whether it's PayPal or Square or others. And then we think there's going to be a third kind of stage of composition of competition, which is driven by the large, you know, uh, financial incumbents. Um, and in every and in every case, uh, our strategy for trying to differentiate ourselves is the same. 
And that strategy is we want to provide the best uh, value that we can for our clients. And we do that through delivering world-class service to them. I think we're the only crypto company that uh, has a phone number that that people can call and sometimes yeah. people get jammed and we're hiring people as fast as we possibly can to make sure it doesn't get jammed. But um, we have a phone number that people can pa- call. We pride ourselves on having a great team that delivers great client service. And we execute really quickly on building new products that add more value for our clients and enable them to do more things with us that add value to their uh, financial lives in the areas that, that we touch. Um, so that's what we stay focused on. We've had an amazing run in assets, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, the NASDAQ, all based on this macro story. Do you ever worry, God, if the macro story changes, we're all going to get kicked in the stomach? <laughs> I mean, I think I think you know uh, that, that world uh, as well as anyone and probably better than I do. Um, but the way I think about it is as follows. When I go on and I'm trying to do this more kind of traditional financial or just in general, more mainstream audience podcasts or TV shows or whatever, I describe my Bitcoin investment thesis as being that it's one part a store of value, an emerging store of value, digital store of value, whatever you want to call it, kind of like gold. And another part of bet on this ecosystem that's getting built with services and functionalities and all kinds of great things that you can do. Um, and so it's kind of like a hedge and a sort of venture capital, yeah. you know, you could have a ton of upside still here, bet combined into one thing. And I don't know of anything else that I would necessarily describe that way. I personally have a very long time horizon. I'm still, you know, relatively young and uh, I've, been investing in crypto long enough to be very comfortable with large amounts of volatility. Um, and so I think of all of this stuff as just a, as just a buying opportunity. And, and, you know, I try not to uh, get too fussed about, you know, day to day fluctuations. And um, could we could we get kicked in the teeth, as, as you say, over the next, uh, you know, day or month or two months? Sure. On a one or two or three year time horizon, I think we're I think the odds are, and if you look at the options market, they'll tell you this quantitatively, the odds are that we're going higher. Um, and, and that's how I'm positioned personally. So you guys, I'm pivoting here a little bit. You guys uh, did a partnership with Visa, uh, which is interesting. Again, you know, it's legacy giants merging into the crypto space. Want to talk to us a little bit about that? Well, first off, how great is Visa's business? I mean, uh, when I was thinking about what what it would take to you know launch the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, which is the product we partner with Visa on, I learned a ton about the credit card business um, and the payment rails that Visa and Mastercard and American Express operate. Um, you know, Visa's Visa has a bigger market cap than than any bank. Uh, Visa is huge, um, and if anyone is you know threatened and positioned to take advantage potentially of this new crypto ecosystem by integrating into it and, and embracing it quickly, it's firms like Visa. Uh, and I think they're starting to do that. Um, so what we're doing with Visa is we're the issuer of uh, the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. I, I got to get one of those things. It's got a great clink. It's a metal metal card, you know, and uh, it, th- this card doesn't actually work. This is just a uh, a sample from the printer to make sure that the look and feel and everything is right before they start actually printing the ones with numbers that you can pay for things with. But um, folks get uh, 1.5% cash back in Bitcoin on every purchase that you make on the card. You're not spending Bitcoin. It's a dollar denominated credit card. You're just earning Bitcoin instead of airline miles or regular cash back. The Bitcoin that you earn from spending on the card goes directly into your BlockFi account where you can earn interest on it trade it, get a loan secured by it and all the other things that we offer on our platform. So I couldn't be more excited about it. I've, I've, I've wanted to launch this uh, since we first started thinking about, OK, what other products could we launch? And it, you know, it's been a long time coming. So awesome. Awesome. No, I listen, I think, well, you're we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing this integration of the world with crypto. And quite frankly, I think in 10 years, people won't know they're dealing with blockchains. It'll just be the back of the TV. 
right? And so a lot of this is user experience, user interface, making things simpler, making them more transparent. Uh, and you guys are doing a great job on that. Outside of this, listen, I, I've lost all my hair, as anyone who watches this podcast can see. Uh, we've been wa operating in a very stressful environment for the last five years, right? Yeah, the 17 bubble, the crash, trying to build businesses, hiring people. Uh, you seem really calm, uh, chill. What do you do to kind of keep yourself balanced? You know, where's the North Star uh, of Zach Prince? How do you... How do you stay happy outside of business? I've got, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a wife and, and two kids and a dog that uh, we got, but, you know, uh, we call him our quarantine puppy because we had to leave New York City and come to our house in upstate New York. And the excuse with the kids on why we couldn't get a dog was, well, we live in New York City and we travel all the time. And then <laughs> we, <laughs> we fled to upstate New York and, uh, you know, hopefully we're moving back to the city this summer. Um, but we got a dog. And so, you know, like this summer I was raising money or, you know, right when we came up here dealing with the crypto market volatility. And then whenever I leave, uh, this, this room that I've turned into my office at our house, you got, you got to get I'm, a little better decoration in there for, if, if it's your office, it's got to have a little block five sign or I don't know, something. Not just a little, not just, not just a little duck in the background. I need like a crypto price ticker or yeah, like a block five banner or something. I, I think, I think I'm hesitant to think of this as permanent because we don't consider ourselves to be full-time, you know, upstate New York people. Like we're New York city people. Um, but you know, yeah, look, the, the family and kids keeps me in check. I, I play tennis. Uh, but also I think it's, I love this shit, man. Like there's, I think about, is there anything I'd rather be doing? And the answer is no. And so d despite how, you know, stressful or challenging any one particular situation is when you have that frame of mind, knowing that there's nothing else you'd rather be doing, it's like, okay, well, let's just, let's just keep going. Whatever, whatever's happening right now, we figure it out and we keep going. So I'll, I will, you know, be yelled at if I don't ask these questions. Uh, you've got, you've done a big financing round. There's SPAC mania going on. There's, you know, IPO mania with Coinbase listing or doing their direct listing. Uh, the public markets wants crypto. When you think of your company, you're building this world-class company. What's the, the capital, the capital structure of it a year from now, two years from now? I mean, you could get, you could get bought, you could SPAC, you could IPO. Is that all on the all on the uh, table. We, we would have been public six months ago if it were completely up to me and there, there weren't a whole bunch of things you needed to do to be ready to go public and to manage being a publicly traded company, which, which you're very well familiar with. Um, yeah. But we're working on it. Uh, we want to be publicly traded. We want uh, folks to be able to, you know, buy shares of, of BlockFi equity. We want to have uh, the awareness um, and, and the brand name that, that comes with being publicly traded and uh, liquid stock to compensate our employees or buy other companies. And uh, we're working on it. Um, so the way we're thinking about it is we'll be ready pretty soon uh, in terms of all the different work streams that, uh, that we have going on uh, for, for public market readiness. And then it's just a question of what the market looks like at that point in time. Um, if it's anywhere near where it is today, even even with you know the beginnings of a of a little bit of a drawdown here, um, then we'll get into the market very quickly. Uh, and whether we do that as a as a SPAC or a traditional IPO or a direct listing, yeah. we'll just depend on uh, you know our evaluation of those options at the time that we're ready. Awesome. Well, listen, I I appreciate the time. You know, we we like to tell our investors that we invest in great founders, great CEOs who have good ideas. And you've been one of the best uh, investments we've had. Uh, it's been fun to be your partner along the way. Uh, I'm proud of all you've accomplished. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, you should be, you know, your wife should give you a high five uh, because you've built something really special. Uh, and thank you uh, for coming on next with Novo. Thanks for having me, Mike. Great to see you, man. <laughs>